Good afternoon. I am Kim Yeon Chol, Minister of Unification for the Republic of Korea. I would like to extend a sincere welcome to all of you who have come to the Korea Global Forum's U.S. Seminar. I'd like to express my many thanks to Jung Chun Baek, Chairman of the Sejong Institute, and Ambassador Joseph Yoon of the United States Institute of Peace, and to all distinguished guests. Cooperation between South Korea and the U.S. being more important now than ever, I am conscious of the significance of directly explaining the South Korean government's policy on North Korea to America's top experts on the Korean Peninsula. I thank you all for the interest and affection you bring to bear on the Korean Peninsula, and I look forward to a substantial discussion that can light the way ahead on that path to peace, which South Korea and the United States have been traveling together. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the state of affairs on the Korean Peninsula is now at an important turning point. On October 5th, uh, working levels uh, talks in Stockholm restarted the clock of dialogue between the U.S. and North Korea that had come to a stop after the Hanoi summit of last February. Although an agreement was not reached, the spark of dialogue has not gone out. North Korea has repeatedly emphasized the deep trust that exists between both countries' leaders while emphasizing the end of the year as the deadline for negotiations. The United States, too, with a stronger will than ever, is making the utmost effort to solve the problem at hand. This is a precious opportunity for the United States, for North Korea, and most of all, for South Korea. We cannot let this opportunity pass because it will not come again. The solution to bringing about real progress in the peace process on the Korean Peninsula is not as far off as one might think. From past history, we already know that changes in relations are at the core of a solution to issues related to the Korean Peninsula. There may be rel many relevant actors, but the most important thing is the organic relationship between the three actors, South Korea, North Korea, and the United States. When these three bilateral relationships between the two Koreas, North Korea and U.S., and between South Korea and U.S., have been in step with each other, thereby creating a virtuous cycle, there have been progress in the Korean Peninsula, too. The experiences of the last year are a case in point. Dialogue between the two Koreas heightened North Korea's will to denuclearize and improve relations with the U.S. In a virtual cycle, this led to talks between U.S. and North Korea and to concrete measures. A new transformation of this triangular relationship is needed in the current standstill so that the resolution of issues related to the Korean Peninsula can regain momentum and make progress. Last September, at a summit held on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly, the leaders of the United States and South Korea affirmed the need to transform the relations between the two Koreas, as well as the relationship between North Korea and the United States. On this occasion, I'd like to discuss the dire direction that triangular relations between the U.S. and the two Koreas should take while focusing on each of these three bilateral relations in turn. First of all, the times for a bolder transformation of inter-Korean relations. Since the truce of 1953, inter-Korean relations have repeatedly stopped and started, moving al alternately towards peace and war, towards understanding and misunderstanding, towards the future and the past. Last year, dazzling and unprecedented results were achieved. But as progress slowed in denuclearization talks, we have again entered a state of lull. The road ahead for inter-Korean relations remains a long one, and there are many issues that need to be resolved. Most urgent of all is the need to address the greatest strategy tragedy of division, namely the problem of separated families. Of the 133,000 members of separated families who have applied to the South Korean government for family reunions, some 60 percent have already passed away. The surviving 53,000 applicants are reaching an average age of 81 years. Their simple but desperate hopes are to confirm whether family members are alive or dead 
or at least travel to the vicinity of their home region before any more time is lost. We have to enable these people to meet their families before their death. This urgent humanitarian problem must take precedence before any political considerations. The South Korean government is also aware that members of some separated families reside in the United States. Recently, while expressing condolences in regard to the passing of President Moon Jae-in's mother, President Trump indicated an interest in the issue of separated families. South and North Korea have already agreed to open a permanent meeting place as part of a fundamental solution to the problem of separated families. The South Korean government is doing its utmost for the speedy implementation of this agreement. The South Korean government also bears the responsibility to solve a variety of other problems that have arisen as a result of division. This is a duty stipulated by our constitution and our legislation. Moreover, moreover the inter-Korean relationship can achieve harmony with the shared American and South Korean goal of denuclearized peninsula and a peace system and become a useful route for encouraging North Korea to make the right choices. So far, it has been our histor historical experience that when relations are good between the two Koreas, North Korean nuclear threat lessens. Last year, we saw directly that by leading the way, inter-Korean relationship ushered in the improvement of relations between North Korea and the U.S., as well as the peace process on the Korean Peninsula. Furthermore, the implementation of measures for the relaxation of military tensions that were agreed to in the Pyongyang Joint Declaration of 2018 have dramatically reduced the danger of accidental military clashes and created favorable conditions for denuclearization talks. The denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and the establishment of a permanent peace are important concerns for the United States, but they are the most important concerns of all to South Korea, whose future and fate depend on them. The South Korean government is constantly exploring plans for the development of an inter-Korean relationship that can contribute to the improvement of relations between U.S. and North Korea, as well as to progress in the peace process on the uh, Korean Peninsula. It's true that various external conditions greatly limit the room within which inter-Korean relations can operate, but there certainly exist roles that the inter-Korean relationship must play in the process of building peace on the peninsula. If the inter-Korean relationship is tied and bound, relations between the U.S. and North Korea will also have a hard time progressing beyond a certain level. At this point, the important thing is for leaders of the two Koreas to implement carefully the items agreed to in last year's summits of Panmunjom in Pyongyang. Recently, North Korea approached the South Korean government and relevant business operators with a demand for removal of decrepit facilities from Mount Kumgang, which it intends to make into an international tourist area. At the same time, however, North Korea made it clear that removal would proceed through consultation and that South Korean citizens would also be welcome at Mount Kumgang. In the 10 years after the first cruise ship left harbor in 1998, 1,930,000 South Korean citizens visited the Kumgang Mountains, making them a symbol of inter-Korean exchange and cooperation, and a place in which citizens of North and South Korea could meet and interact. Last year, the leaders of South and North Korea agreed on a plan to normalize tourist operations in Kumgang Mountains when conditions are prepared. It has been the consistent position of the South Korean government that all problems pertaining to inter-Korean relations must be solved through dialogue and consultation. This holds true for the issue of Mount Kumgang tourism as well. Once the two Koreas sit face to face, a creative, implementable solution can be found that satisfies both sides. The South Korean government regards the current situation not as a crisis, as a crisis for Mount Kumgang tourism, but as an opportunity to prepare the foundation for sustainable inter-Korean exchange and cooperation. Keeping in mind the change conditions and environment, the South Korean government will actively push for the resumption and vitalization of Mount Kumgang tourism through consultation with North Korea. Expanding the scope of cooperation, a joint inter-Korean tourist area will be created along part of the East Sea coast, and inter-Korean human exchanges will be vitalized in accordance with the agreement reached by North and South Korea, South and North Korea, and the Pyongyang Joint Declaration. In addition, President Moon proposed in his speech at the UN General Assembly that the DMZ will be turned into an international peace zone. If the DMZ that cuts across the center of the Korean Peninsula can become an arena for cooperation between North and South Korea and the international community, the danger of military clashes will be conspicuously reduced. 
the DMZ will serve as a stabilizing institution that drives the in denuclearization process. Apart from this, there are endless potential areas of cooperation that can be realized right away with benefit to both Koreas, should North Korea respond favorably. There are roles to be played by every uh, nation in the trilateral relationship. The South Korean government will actively seek out and expand uh, such spaces of sustainable inter-Korean cooperation. The aim is to offer real world proof that the inner peace can be expanded outward. A transformational relations between the U.S. and North Korea must be achieved. Both parties had already come to an agreement in Singapore regarding the ultimate goal of denuclearization. It was agreed to exchange the complete denuclearization of North Korea for a guarantee of the security of the North Korean regime. This agreement is still in effect. The current task is for the two parties to agree on the order in which they implement their sides. Uh, this is related to the level of trust between North Korea and the U.S. Both countries have maintained hostile relations uh, for over 70 years. Uh, the ocean of mistrust is not easy to traverse in one attempt. The reason is that the North Korea and the U.S. must improve their understanding of each other and carefully build trust through dialogue and negotiations. It is to be hoped that follow-up talks begin as soon as possible so that the momentum of negotiations is not lost. Dialogue is the only solution. In addition, creative plans for building early trust between the two sides must be explored. In this uh, regards, attention should be paid uh, to the three principles for resolving issues related to the Korean Peninsula that President Moon had proposed early this year at the UN General Assembly. Uh, those three factors or the principles are zero tolerance for war, a mutual security guarantee, and co-prosperity. Zero to tolerance for war means that the firm principle of solving issues uh, related to the Korean Peninsula in a peaceful manner. The truce regime of a Korean Peninsula under a passive peace must be converted to a permanent peace regime in which war cannot break out again. This will be a benefit to America and the entire international community. A mutual security guarantee means creating the security environment in which North Korea can concentrate on denuclearization measures. Chairman Kim Jong-un must be guided in such a way that he continues on the current road and does not abandon the will to do away with the nuclear weapons. While talks are in progress to those ends, both sides must refrain from all hostile actions. Last year, the decision to postpone joint military exercise between South Korea and the U.S. created positive conditions uh, for progress in the peace process on the Korean Peninsula. The co-prosperity co means a virtuous cycle for peace and the economy. When peace yields practical benefits to the parties maintaining it, the building of an even firmer peace becomes possible. By encouraging North Korea to choose economy and prosperity instead of uh, nuclear weapons, denuclearization can be driven forward and military tensions reduced. The relaxation of sanctions on North Korea will accelerate denuclearization and the building of peace on the Korean Peninsula. But at, but at what stage and in what scope sanctions are to be relaxed is a question that remains to be answered. A more flexible and creative approach is possible. The inter-Korean relationship can also be an important strategic in instrument. By expanding the realm of inter-Korean cooperation, ways can be found in which to provide sufficient inducement to North Korea without arousing the concern of the international community. Considering North Korea's emphasis on the end of the year as a deadline, there is a high possibility that one or two opportunities will present themselves before then. The important thing to remember is that once we lose this opportunity, we do not know when the next one will be. The opportunities of the present must be used to the full effect and not squandered. 
The experience of past failures can serve as a good lesson. It is difficult to build trust while maintaining hostile policies. The time has come for the North Korea and the U.S. to end their long history of his hostile relations. For the Korean uh, process, peace process uh, to become more effective, uh, we have to have a strong uh, relationship between the U.S. and Korea. For the past six, six years, uh, the alliance between South Korea and the U.S. has played a key role and rendered important services in keeping peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. Last year, in particular, close cooperation between South Korea and the U.S. Uh, allowed uh, for a much uh, stronger uh, stance uh, towards North Korea, we must now move forward and firmly consolidate peace on the Korean Peninsula on the basis of the results achieved uh, during uh, that time. The four points uh, set out by the U.S. and North Korea in the Singapore Agreement are milestones uh, showing the way forward uh, for peace process on the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. and Korea must join forces so that progress is achieved in each of those four pillars. To those ends, but inter-Korean relations and relations between North Korea and the U.S. must be transformed. A virtuous cycle in the tripartite relationship between North and South Korea and the U.S. must be brought about with North and South Korea staking out a space for sustainable cooperation and North Korea and the U.S. carefully building trust between them. We have a common purpose. Uh, we have worked uh, together. We have combined wisdom, overcoming adverse cities. The history of the alliance between South Korea and the U.S. is one of growth upon growth in an ever-changing environment. In the future, too, South Korea and the U.S. will <coughs> continue to serve the peace and stability of Korean Peninsula and Northeast Asia while constantly adjusting and fine-tuning uh, their ro uh, ro roles. I appreciate your time today, and thank you.